Oh, it works. Okay. Okay. Thank you for inviting me. I'm Kaz Hayashi from the National Institute of Science and Technology Policy. Uh, I'm a governmental think tank researcher of Ministry of Science and Technology, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I'm um, supposed to be the expert of open science, and my title is Transformation of Open Science and Society Driven by Open Science. Uh, and the uh, subtitle is Potential and Challenges of Discontinuous Change. So this is outline of my slide. Uh, I, uh, uh, introducing what I did and uh, what I do, uh, I'm going to introduce what is open science indeed. And after that, my personal, uh, I will present my personal view towards open science paradigm. And uh, I will share uh, my lessons learned uh, from past, sorry, past 20 years for disruptive transformation of science. Uh, it is, I, I believe it will help the size community, younger community. And again, uh, it is for helping decide to take shortcut or choose more efficient way uh, to move forward. So, so let's start from what I did and what I do. So uh, what I did is, uh, I, first I was a computer geek to develop online journal system. And now uh, helping trying to install metaverse in science. So I have idea background. And second, I was past chemistry trained. I made an organic synthesis, and uh, also now ha now supposed to be a social scientist for meta science with computational data and thinking. So I have a background of academia, and I practically developed e e uh, online journals in nineteen uh, in late nineteen nineties to early twenties, and implemented open access. So I have a background with edit and publishing industry. And now I'm in a policy world to develop in open access and open science policy, including research data sharing. So I have a background in policy. And finally, I'm now getting involved in a transformation of citizen science for redesigning the relationship between science and uh, society again. So I'm also interested in uh, science and society. So, uh, I want to be a catalyzer or initiator for transformation, uh, for transforming science and society as a whole. And uh, from historical uh, manners, I belong to the University of Tokyo, uh, chemical, so uh, chemical Society of Japan, and now I'm in a government, I think, researcher. And uh, I literally developed the digital peer review tracking system in younger age, like you, at, uh, like uh, at your age, and I developed online journals, XML publishing, uh, some uh, semi-old publication system to generate PDF and XML at the same time. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, I also implemented the uh, EJ business uh before open access and uh, implement after implemented open access then i suddenly noticed that it is a matter of policies that's why i changed it to the policy world and uh, i help japan to install orchid automatics rda and i'm an initiator of the g7 open science working group and also i am a member of a unesco advisory committee member for <laughs> open science recommendations so and uh, the last part, uh, in the latter uh, 20, uh, 20 uh, 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 before the, uh, 2020, I'm interested in the blockchain and I am a member of a task force for the uh, International Union of Peer and, Chemi uh, Peer and Chemi uh, Peer, uh, Applied and Peer Chemistry, a blockchain task member to install blockchain in the uh, international chemistry world, and finally, I'm now uh, the latest one is get involved in the virtual land society to install a metaverse in, uh, in a metaverse in to the uh, Japan scholarly communication. And uh, just one fun thing is uh, I was a uh, president of the parents and the teacher association of my sons and daughters, and I digital transform the PTA facility. But anyway, and also I, I, I had a, uh, I, I helped NHK, uh, big, biggest broadcasting TV program uh, to introduce the citizen science. So from these kind of 
my experience, I would like to introduce what is open science. Maybe you know open science is uh, some uh, recently defined by the UNESCO or the uh, US OSTP, but not important for today's message because open science is still changing. So, but once it is defined, it will be, it will start to collapse. So, uh, but the policy implemented at the past. Uh, main three pillars I would like to introduce open access uh, and open research data, uh, research data sharing and also citizen science. And maybe you always discuss about the patterns or preprint. And now uh, the uh, cutting edge policy developing, uh, developing the research data platform for sharing research data in the process of uh, research itself not just after publication. And uh, student science will change the relationship between uh, science and society. And uh, on the, now the open science is a global agenda for the future. Uh, the uh, left one is a, a G7 uh, research compact to emphasize, emphasize uh, open science itself. And the center is the UNESCO's recommendation for open science and uh, uh, over uh, almost 200 countries is uh, uh, endorsed by the over uh, uh, almost 200 countries, and it is endorsed by the International Science Council and the United Nations. And so we are going to enter into the uh, era of open science as a default. And uh, so today's context, uh, what is open science indeed? Uh, still no general confirmed international definition, but open science is described as a movement driven by the ICT or internet on the digital and the networked system, exploiting open infrastructure and its huge and various information to transform science itself, transform society, including industry, and transform relationship between science and society. And it is not free open, as open as possible, as close as necessary. Uh, and uh, FAIR is important. FAIR is a findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Uh, that uh, philosophy or uh, culture is now being fostered among the, uh, all over the world. And uh, uh, please uh, focus on the orange part. If we change this to the driven by the massive printing technology on the mail logistics, then we can describe 17th century's open science. At that age, uh, uh, right side, invention of uh, scholarly journals happened together with the invention of the land society. It means a lo uh, launch of lo launching of royal society and uh, publishing the uh, philosophical transaction as a fast journal platform. And uh, at that age, uh, Newton and Leibniz is fa was fighting to say that uh, I'm, I, my, I invented the uh, cal calculus. Uh, it, it means the integration of the mathematics and the physics. And uh, it eventually uh, helped uh, our society to uh, go get into the uh, in, uh, industry, industrial revolution. So, and uh, so maybe we repeat history and uh, you can easily imagine that we are now going to from the, uh, let's say Gutenberg's uh, paradigm to uh, the uh, web or internet based world. Yeah, it's, it's easy to say that it, difficult to implement. And uh, now we are entering the new open close strategy to facilitate their science, business, and uh, any uh, social activities. But uh, please take a look at the uh, red one. ICT has progressed, but, but laws, legal framework, including the copyright and intellectual property, and even the framework of the social system it's, itself remains as it is in the, based on the printing world. So we have to say we are still just at the beginning of the transformation. So 
that's why, yeah, the panel discussion, I really enjoy that because <laughs> I have this slide, so <laughs> anyway. So my personal view towards open science paradigm, uh, I'd like to introduce. As I just introduced before, open science is a movement towards paradigm shifting of the society with the ICT. And uh, I always said hybrid, incremental, and disruptive. Focusing on the scholarly communication. Uh, preprint is one of the most promis promising media for incremental change of scholarly communication. On the other hand, uh, DESI or any other disruptive activities is also a candidate to move forward or transform science and the society. And uh, uh, this point is very significant. Not alternative, but additional change to the current established system is very, very, very crucial. I'd like to introduce from another uh, uh, other slide. Uh, I'm a chemist, so I, I, I always I like to use this slide. Uh, open science is a transfer, a phase transfer from A to B. And we need a much more activation energy to transfer. Or we uh, can use the catalyzer to reduce the activation energy. So we are now in a pr still printing-based or paper citation-based world. And we now are exploiting the preprint as a game changer of the scholarly communication. On the other hand, the policy world is already thinking about the disruptive change, uh, developing a uh, research data platform or any other disruptive activity. Uh, uh, they are at least see, uh, recognizing its potential. And uh, uh, this is uh, our, uh, our uh, institution survey, uh, of course, of this. And uh, uh, we analyze uh, uh, all of the uh, preprint on archive. We found that uh, the informatics were the less likely to publish papers after preprint. Compared to the physics, uh, uh, we observe uh, this as a, uh, as a Adaptation of DOI after the uh, preprint published. So informatics people doesn't have DOI after uh, publication their preprint, but they cite preprint compared to the physics world. So they are already on the ecosystem without uh, without peer reviewed journal articles. They are already developing. Uh, preprint ecosystem as an incremental change. It is well saying, narratively saying, but uh, uh, our survey showed as a, as a quant uh, quantitative manner. And uh, this slide is very noisy, but very important. Uh, from practical and towards the X side, and from based, uh, paper based to the data based, uh, I can move there. So we are still in the very uh, conservative field. Existing paradigm has a, a big real problem, brand issues for researchers to be promoted, and the citation based impact factor, and any other issues. I had have struggled when I was uh, publishing in world. But anyway, and as I just be introduced, we are going to improve with incre incrementally uh, exploiting the open access journals, preprint, or uh, automatics, or something like that. But the uh, policy world is already uh, aiming the developing a research data platform. And uh, on, uh, furthermore, the, uh, at least I assume that blockchain-based system will be there as a part of new scholarly uh, ecosystem. But uh, we observe that there is a significant gap between them. So uh, for policy world, it's very harsh to implement uh, both, uh, both scenarios uh, within a limited budget or limited resources. 
So, and uh, from, the, the, uh, and uh, uh, you can imagine that uh, this gap is a kind of a phase transfer from A to B, print base to the digital native base. And uh, here is a, the same chart. And uh, from another point of view, we are going to, uh, we are going from publisher perished world towards a share or perished world. And uh, what I would like to stress is we, uh, as a reliable, uh, reliable and uh, practical phase transfer, we should take an addish, additive methodology on the current established but under robust system because it's easy to persuade the decision maker in all the age. And uh, uh, it is robust, uh, based on the robust and established uh, ecosystem, we can enjoy a play around trying to something new. Uh, it is like, a, uh, it is like, a, just like a movie, television, internet, and YouTube. They are all, all existing, still existing. And the proportion is changing. So I believe something uh, similar thing will happen in the scholarly communication. So lesson learned for disruptive transformation of science, including design. First of all, I feel very similar atmosphere when each of electronic journals and the open access or the research data sharing became a hot topic, especially for younger people uh, 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 right, uh, 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 have a uh, bright view or the uh, smiley, the, uh, our dreaming of the future of scholarly communication. But uh, uh, I'm not discouraging you, but the fact that current ecosystem of scholarly communication is very robust because as long as decision makers of the community, scholarly community, uh, winner of the established system, it won't change drastically. It is a fact. And uh, not fact, not fact, it is, uh, how can I say in English? But anyway, you can imagine that uh, some, of course, top of top scientists uh, understand easily the potential of the future, but at a layer of the decision makers, or average of the decision makers, are likely to de uh, make a decision based on their experience, or their, they based on their uh, winner strategy. So, and, uh, so that generational shift is needed. Uh, but uh, be careful that uh, robust, but sometimes all concepts are printed on younger research in the lab and uh, repeat to produce all the concepts in the lab. So this is also well uh, uh, said in the laboratory. And the third one is that technology is a necessary but not su sufficient condition, you know. And uh, social skills are more important in addition to IT skills. And uh, yeah, we love IT. So among these community, uh, we can enjoy uh, IT or any other techie uh, issues. But IT should be unsung hero if you really wish to uh, do social change because not all of them like uh, IT or something geeky. And uh, finally, estimation of lead time or inertia for cultural change is crucial because even open access, I have struggled, still have struggled as an incremental change on the current ecosystem has taken over 20 years, you know, over 20 years and still in progress. So, and uh, uh, for studying the culture with research data sharing is much more harder. I'm now, I'm now experiencing this than the way. So we need to be brave, but not reckless. And we need to be well prepared 
because external factors, something like a COVID-19 or chat GPT uh, provide, will provide an opportunity to change uh, things dramatically. So I'm not discouraging you. I would like to uh, uh, share my experience, what is important position taking to move forward. So this is conclusion and message forward. Vision of open science seems to be assured by our history, at least from my position, my viewpoint. And the changing established uh, ecosystem of scholarly communication needs more resource than you uh, expect now. Because in younger age, I, I expected more change will, would happen after 20 years or so, something like that. And uh, you can enjoy this eye. And uh, I, 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 I also uh, partially enjoy this eye uh, because I'm not expert but uh, I can enjoy other uh, open science issues. And uh, if you really wish to implement practically, please keep in mind that it should be not for you extremely. It is for you, but it is not for you extremely, but rather for next or second next generation, if we, even if you are still younger, because decentralized uh, uh, manners will change the governance of the uh, country or any bigger uh, organization. That will need a much more time. But you can enjoy and you can try many things. And uh, if we, it survives, you will be a winner to the next generation. So good luck, best wishes, and uh, can I help you for policy making? That's all for, from me. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Uh, so we also have uh, five minutes more or less. So if you have a question, uh, I will share the microphone. Anyone? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, uh. Hello, um, thank you for your presentation. And uh, I thought it was about the, how uh, the infamous Elsevier <laughs> and Clarivate is acting and how they are unbeatable. And then it was so helpful presentation, thank you so much. And then my question is that, um, is there any example in your mind that uh, those companies are more than expected. I mean, is there any troubles or the lawsuit in any cases that we don't, or it's not famous so much? Mm, thank you for your question. Yeah, I'm seeking for such uh, brave companies. Uh, and uh, only I can say is, uh, uh, you know, Elsevier, uh, Elsevier and Springer Nature both have their own strategy for the future. Elsevier, uh, once some uh, game, uh, some once some innovator or the game changer startup uh, uh, will uh, be there, uh, is there, Elsevier uh, take over that company. But Springer Nature uh, is helping them. Uh, not directly, but uh, supporting uh, them by the digital science company, yeah, sister company of Springer Nature, to help such kind of uh, innovate, innovator to uh, facilitate uh, their activity. And uh, uh, yeah, I wonder, uh, the, uh, I wonder, yeah, some Japanese innovator uh, will. Uh, uh, become a, uh, will become a, a leader to be uh, taken by the uh, digital science uh, to yeah as, as you, you uh, as you are challenging to develop a data repository for the for the uh, research process uh, data sharing but anyway uh, and there are much uh, tons of chance for younger people to develop uh, small but uh, innovative company 
to be part of the new scholarly communication. In, in my age, uh, you know, I changed from the paper world to digital world. First of all, and after that, I implemented, the, I improved to change more digital electronic native world. So compared to that era, you have tons of chance, you have a potential to, uh, to do next, to challenge, uh, to develop something new or something different. So yeah, uh, I don't know much of such company. That might be a chance for you to uh, make a yeah, new company. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so the session four is ended now. So please take a, a break, a short break. And uh, sorry, uh, the time is uh, 520, 520, uh, at 520, uh, please come uh, here and yeah, let's have a next session. Okay, so take a break. Thank you so much.